So Lebanese TV host Rima Karaki doesn't take any shit when it comes to handling unruly guests on her TV show. Karaki was interviewing Sheikh Hani Al Sabai, and when she tried to refocus him after asking a question, and he kind of went into this whole historical diatribe, uh, shit got real. Take a look. اولا هذه انا بتكلم لكي يفهم ال اول شيء كيف شيخ محترم مثلك بيقول اسكتي لمذيعة معلش كيف بتقول اسكتي يعني امال انا محترم رجل خلص ما عاد بدي كفي هذا الموضوع فينا نوقف الموضوع انا لا يشرفني ان احضر فينا نوقف الموضوع لو سمحتوا شباب لا انت لحظه 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 يعني او بده يكون في احترام متبادل او بلي الموضوع كله Damn, regulating. What now? For real. I also love the suspenseful like background music during the entire time she's talking. Like I feel like I want that like in everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, of course, we love that there's a, a TV station in the Middle East where the woman gets to regulate on a sheik and gets him yeah, to I mean, cuts his mic. You never see that, and mm -hmm. and it feels good. It's interesting though because she's wearing a hijab. Look, you're you're told by your religion you got to cover up, right? You got to be modest, and a lot of those rules are crafted by male individuals, such as the one that you're interviewing right now. Right. So it is kind of interesting to see her in such a powerful position, shut down the conversation against a guy who, I don't know, has some say in some of the decisions you make in your life. So it's an interesting point. There's a little bit of ironies that she's outraged that, she, that he would talk to her that way, but how outraged could you be in a culture that systematically um, you know, has different rules for women than men? And understand, I, my family is from Muslim background. Now in Turkey we were up secular so we didn't have any of this hijab nonsense, right? They do now because things have gotten more fundamentalist throughout uh, the world, right? But, um, but even so, I, I look, they say it's all free nature, no, 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 the women want to. I mean, look, think about how absurd that is. Okay, women naturally want to do head coverings, mm -hmm. except they just happen to only do it in the Middle East, right? And they don't do it in China, they don't do it in uh, Northern Europe, they don't do it in Africa. Well, some parts of Africa they do, of course, partly because of Islam. And, and now there are more orthodox beliefs, uh, not just that are uh, Muslim, but also in other religions that also have head coverings, right? For women. But it's also based on the religion and the culture, yeah, yeah. right? It's women didn't. They're not so vastly different from men that they are born with a desire to want to cover up and cover no, up their head and make sure that they are modestly dressed. No, it's born of your culture. That's from the text, right? There's no question about that. And they, in those texts, men and women are treated differently, not just in Islam, but in Christianity as well, no question. I mean, in Christianity, you can't even have women priests in most of the different sects of Christianity. And the list goes on and on. I mean, do you have a female pope? I mean, ironically, though, the pope has to wear the funny outfit. So maybe it's a little just desserts. Uh, but it's definitely a cultural thing. So, uh, and the reason I bring all of that up is that she lives in that context. But the reality of her nature, if you want to make an argument about right. nature, is that of course she doesn't want to put up with this guy telling her to shut up, and right. even though it's her show. I mean, he would never do that to a guy. Yeah. And and so, of course, she doesn't want to deal with that because she's a human being, and and she's, you know, she's got pride. I don't mean in a bad way. I mean in a good way, yeah. like that you don't want to put up with it. Yeah, and the best part of the story is that she was actually trying to help him. Like he had certain talking points that he wanted to get to, and she was like, "Hey, just so you know, you're kind of going off, you know, off the beat. So like, let's kind of refocus so that we can get the things that you want to get out." And he was like, "No, I'm gonna talk about what I want to talk about." She's like, "Whoa, whoa, where yeah, did that come yeah. from?" It is you know who that reminded me of? Sorry, Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. Like when during the debate she had back in 2008 with Joe Biden, they asked her a question in the debate, and she's like, "I'm not going to answer your question. I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about, right?" Yeah. Because the, when you have fundamentalists, they can't have a com rational conversation with you. That's not that's the opposite of being fundamentalist is being rational. So they can't have a back and forth. They just want to go to their talking point. The Quran says this. The right wing ideology says that. So I'm not answering your question. 